Welcome everyone to the Holstein House Podcast. I'm the West Virginia woman, Robin of RobinHolstein.com and Holstein House, where my guests get a great night's sleep at a fair rate plus breakfast. This is a podcast that looks at society and culture issues affecting families in West Virginia and the United States, from food preparation and storage, gardening, home repairs, current events, and more. We'll go around the table and back in 60 minutes or less. So let's hang out and talk a while. Good morning, all y'all. How are you doing this Tuesday morning? I'm Robin Holstein, and this is the Holstein House broadcast. It's Tuesday, November the 7th, 2023, and this is episode 113 of the Holstein House broadcast, answering your questions on hosting at B&B from your home, your food pantry, food preparation and storage questions, and much more. <clears throat> Today's broadcast, we're going to focus on um, taxes, taxes and your B&B, and uh, whether you uh, may be r- liable for taxes or not. <clears throat> So those of you who are listening on the podcast, I see your numbers. I know you're out there. I'd love to put some names with those numbers. So if you would uh, send me a message, let me know you're there. You can use your, uh, the podcast app, whatever you're um, streaming the podcast on, leave a comment there. If I don't get back to you, I may not have that app. So just go to RobinHolstein.com and swing over to the contacts page and uh, send me a message that way and say, hey, I use um, podcast a lot or something <laughs> and I heard you over there and I just wanted to let you know that I listen to the show from time to time and then I'll go look and see if uh, if that's a podcast app that I can access and and uh, I'll, I'll start checking it uh, more because there's so many of them out there there's just no way I can check them all and uh, if you just let me know you're out there I really would appreciate it Well, I hope your Tuesday morning is going fine or whatever time of day or day of the week or day of the month or year for that matter that you happen to hear uh, this or or view the the video of this uh, broadcast. Um, It's not too bad here. We're having some issues with forest fires. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, But uh, the weather is is decent. It's a good day. It's a good Tuesday. I have a lot going on as usual. And uh, Hope to get through everything today in our hour together. I try to stay, for those of you who don't know, I try to stay within an hour. Sometimes we do go over a little bit. Depends on, um, you know, if we have a lot of uh, activity, a lot of uh, (coughs) comments and and folks back and forth and uh, conversation. And sometimes it does go over a little bit, but we try to keep it about to an hour. I see Hunter this morning. Good morning, Hunter. I hope... uh, I hope you're doing well and uh, working hard, but not harder than you need to. (laughs) Um, I know we have some folks over on some of the other applications this morning. Some of you guys with uh, uh, handles and and things that I can't pronounce and strings of numbers and stuff. And I just want to thank you for being there as well. Be sure and say hello. Be sure and say hello. Well, this morning we're going to talk just a little bit about the B&B generally. Um, <clears throat> apologize for this voice again. I <laughs> can't do a whole lot about it right now. It's the uh, it's the inhaler. So we don't have re- reservations coming up this week. I have the calendar closed because of just a slew of appointments and things that are happening. Um with uh, dad this month actually is going to be very very busy other than just uh thanksgiving in and of itself um hang on just this sorry i had to had to cough (laughs) i didn't think you wanted to hear that oh it doesn't matter if hunter's bugging you with questions hunter i can always ignore the questions I can ignore the questions. I don't like to, though. I like to have a conversation. Hunter said it matters if it, if if he's bugging me with questions, but he doesn't bug me with them. He usually has pretty decent questions. There are some channels you watch that they're just really off the charts, just 
bad stuff. <laughs> and uh, you just, uh, you just got to be picky about, about your questions there. But uh, we have, I do have uh, the calendar for the B&B closed a lot this month, uh, not just because of Thanksgiving holidays, but we have a tremendous for myself that doesn't suffer. I've always go by the um by the uh it sounds right instead of it is right. <laughs> but you can get in trouble with that too because sometimes you were raised to use really bad grammar. And while grammar isn't a it won't kill you, you know, it's just sometimes it could Hopefully I'm back. Apparently our uh, internet service, the wonderful, wonderful Optimum service, it used to be Sudden Stink, but it's Optimum now took a big crash. So um, hopefully everybody will be back on here in just a few minutes. And uh, well, I think it takes about 30 seconds for that all to come up. And uh, we'll, uh, morning Loco, Loco Mike, the Philippine Nomad. Um, This room. And our internet has been acting um, just stupid uh, the last, well, really since the weekend, I guess. I mean, it's just uh, Saturday. It was blinking in and out. Um, the reason I think it's still completely out is because I don't hear the upstairs TV. Um, we stream with um, Sling TV. And um, I don't hear it. Usually the uh, it'll reload. You know, once the internet comes back up, but yeah, this is stupid. I, unless they come back and say, "Oh, it's because of the forest fire," um, it uh, it just it's just stupid. But anyway, um, I lost my place. Other than Hunter said, "Let me see if I can do this." <laughs> oh, I was talking about Dad's appointments, <laughs> and Hunter said it matters if he was bugging me with questions, but. He wasn't bugging me with questions. And good morning to Mike. Glad to see you, Mike. Glad to see you very much. Um, so I think I was at talking about dad's appointment. So dad's getting um, 
He's getting his MRIs on Thursdays. He's getting the first of probably a couple of injections in the spine uh, on Friday. Uh, Friday's afternoon or, or right about noon. Um, so I think I'll be able to do the Friday show as planned. Um, cause I, I, yeah, cause I, it's only like a 20 minute drive over there. So, um, if I finish up here at 11, pick it, I mean, yeah, there's more than enough time. Friday should not be impacted as far as the live, uh, oh, Mike. Um, so what I'm doing, uh, is I'm tethering, I'm tethering to my, uh, running a personal hotspot on my cell phone. So I connected uh, this laptop to that and um, I kind of get complacent. <laughs> and so it takes me a minute. I really should be pre-staged to have that. So I don't uh, miss a beat on it, but <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't do that this morning, but it's been a while since I actually, I mean, it's blinked a little bit, but I've never had a total. It's still as far as I can tell is out up there, but um that might affect how what some of the, I was going to share some images and stuff. I don't know. Uh, it might not affect it, but it might. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so then uh, later in um, next week, I have an appointment. Do I, I, I hate to do I hate to do this because I can't remember. I'm thinking next week is just as busy. Um, and Wednesday, of course, tomorrow we have our Bibles and Brunch at the church. And um, I've got a workshop there. Um, this is the 7th. And Veterans Day is the 10th, by the way, for all of you who are in the United States. And um, I don't know what they call it everywhere else. For the United States, they, they've moved to calling it Veterans Day. And it's a recognition of the veterans that we have living uh, who have served our our country in the military of some form. There's always groups trying to hijack that um, and trying to add to, but it's supposed to be for the veterans, our military veterans. Monday, Dad has a, has a doctor's appointment, just a checkup appointment with his general practitioner. Tuesday, I'm supposed to have an eye exam. <laughs> just what I need is an eye exam. Uh, Wednesday is our Bible study and uh, oh Wednesday our um, <laughs> I got to reach out to uh, John the guy that's handling this the West Virginia State University is doing a turkey talk. <laughs> we're gonna talk about different ways of fix that we're gonna talk about taking whole turkeys and cutting them up and stuff. And, and freezing them and, and making separate meals. Because, you know, you get turkey 98 cents a pound. You get a whole turkey. I did see a local store having turkey breast at 98 cents a pound, which is really good if you can get one. Which, you know, ground beef is, is still really close to $5. It's four something, four and change. <clears throat> turkey at 98 cents. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. The problem with the turkey is people don't want to cook it they don't want to take a, a full bird they don't want to cut it up you know and and cook it so it's too much trouble to save three dollars a pound to feed your family um thanksgiving week uh is clear and at the end of the month dad has a doc has an appointment um to follow up on his injections and his mri and then on the next day is our, we both have a dermatologist appointment and that's it. I'm, it's, it's kind of hectic and it's kind of not. So it looks like everything's still down. Not that you guys care. <laughs> just, just being nosy, just getting distracted with the squirrel. Um. <clears throat> So that's kind of, that's why I have big blocks of time uh, on the um, the B&B, &B, uh, the room uh, blocked off on the on the uh, uh, reservation calendar for the B&B &B closed off. There's just a lot going on there. Um, we are, like I said earlier, when we first got started, we're experiencing quite a few forest fires in West Virginia. And I have a little... Um, I don't think it'll play. It might play. Give me just a Well, I don't even know if you can see it or not. Um, 
No, it's not even loaded up. I I'll post it. Um, I have it in the um, in the Telegram gr group. A little thirty second clip of the haze and the smoke just here, right here in the valley where I'm at in Kanawha County from the forest fire. Um, and um, it's really you can really smell it. Some of the fires aren't very far from me if you looked at a map. Um, you know, to walk or drive to it, they're a good little ways. But as far as a forest fire, they're not that far. I'm not impacted by them. Most likely wouldn't be impacted. It'd be really hard for, for my area, my town to be impacted by the forest fires. But our Division of Forestry director was on, uh, was interviewed, and it was played this morning. And they're uh, considering a, a statewide ban on outdoor burning for a period of time. We're just so very dry with this time of year and all of the leaves that have fallen off uh, the mountains and uh, the trees in the mountains and stuff. Um, all that litter on the ground uh, in, the, in the mountains, um, it's just really a tinderbox. And he said, uh, the director of forestry said, actually some of these are arson fire, ar were caused by arson. And it just forgive the pun here it burns me up that people would do stuff like that and you you will destroy entire communities you'll in destroy entire mountain ranges and it by the fire it will just destroy um everything it just burns it and then you'll get into some rain we'll hit some rainy season here in a few weeks and then that mud and that nastiness and it's just gonna be all over there's just gonna be terrible this will be terrible. And, and, and arson, arson, it just drives me crazy. Uh, lightning strike, we very seldom, we rarely have lightning star, strike fires that I'm aware of at this magnitude in West Virginia. <clears throat> and, uh, but, you know, some of them are just laziness. People flipping cigarette butts out and they think, oh, my little cigarette butt won't do much. Yes, it can. Yes, it very well can. And, um, just, uh, I never want to smoke. And I'm not, I had somebody say, call me self-righteous one day. And I just, I'm like, I don't get, I don't get that. But I, I try to live by the rules of decency. Okay. It's not necessarily law, but decency. Uh, flipping cigarettes out the window is littering and it's not good. Nothing eats those things. It's not like throwing an apple core out the window, you know, that the critters is going to eat or it's going to decompose or whatever. A cigarette butt's trash. Don't be throwing trash out. Plus, a butt that's not completely out can cause a fire. It just can't. <laughs> so just be, people be decent. Can we not just be decent in this world? Oh, but the Hatfield and McCoy four-wheeler trail has been impacted. And this is just, this goes along with the B&B &B stuff. It's a little tourism-y kind of stuff. Um, I don't get guests that stay here to do the Hatfields and McCoy trail yet. Uh, the trail is supposed to be expanded over the course of a few years, at which time there will be a, a, a access, I forget what they call them, but there it's an access close enough to me that we possibly could be a place for folks who like to four wheel to to stay and then go to uh, one of the access points and ride the trail <clears throat> but um right now the trail has been impacted and there's big pieces of it that's closed off and so even and if you're a hunter if you come into west virginia hunt or even to fish you've got to pay attention to where the uh, the fires are because you could be negatively impacted by these things. Um, we're not supposed to get rain until Thursday or Friday, and I don't know that we're supposed to get enough to really make a difference, but uh, it's just terrible outside. You you go out, you can't hardly breathe. So I actually would be in favor of, I will do it, but it, I, it wouldn't bother me for folks to say, I'm gonna wear a, 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 a KN95 outside. <laughs> to filter out the smoke from what I'm breathing. I probably should with all this that I've got coming up and going on now. <clears throat> yeah, maybe, maybe. So Mike says, uh, two and a half weeks till Thanksgiving this year, correct? Well, yeah, um, if you're in the United States. 
you know, there's some of those Canadians that claim the true Thanksgiving is in October. <laughs> but uh, when you're in Rome, right? When you're in Rome. So, yeah, it today is the, the seventh, uh, two weeks and two days. Two weeks and two days. So I will be, uh, I won't, it's not going to be a big dinner this year. I mean, it, um, I, I've kind of dialed back a little bit over the years anyway, as different family members move on and do things on their own. And, um, you know, Jess and the kids, they, and Joe tend to go and do their own things on these holidays. Um, if they tell me they're going to be around and my son hasn't been in to visit for a major holiday in a while. Um, he came in after the Rona was over, but, uh, it was for something particular. I forget what it was. Was it a wedding? I forget what it was now, but he came in um, for something particular for there wasn't for a holiday. And um, yeah, it was. I think he came in last year for no. No, he came in last year, but it wasn't for Christmas. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so I, you know, dad isn't getting around very well. I may take some food over to him um, since he probably won't come over unless he's feeling a lot better by then. And I doubt that that shot's going to make that much of a difference that fast. The shot that you're talking about doing, usually it takes a couple of them to, to make a big difference. But um, for Thanksgiving anyway, because that's only two weeks away. But um, yeah, so we'll, we'll do a little bit of something um, for uh, Thanksgiving. And because um, Mr. Holstein likes to have his turkey and cranberry sauce. <laughs> so we'll fix that for him. <clears throat> all right let's see where was i at i uh, was talking about oh just in general the um the camp the forest fires um you know the smoke that we're smelling now is not canada's fault so it's our own fault <laughs> i um the director also said that the, some of the causes besides arson was some coal seam fires um, i don't know if you've ever heard of that before but what happens is in the underground mines, or I guess it could be sparked by a strip mine, but I, Dad said uh, mostly it's been under, underground mines. For some reason, whether it's equipment uh, scraping and heating and causing spark, for some reason the coal, a, a, a seam of coal will ignite. And it won't be like a big blaze, it's just kind of smolders. And there's enough oxygen that gets to it that it just constantly smolders and it, the heat builds up. And ever so often you'll see little, and it depends on where you're at. You have to be at some of these mine sites usually. You'll see little little wisps of smoke coming up out of the ground. And that's because underneath that ground there is a coal seam fire and it's smoke like water making its way out. But uh, you can't extinguish those things. They, they burn until they burn out. And so the coal mines will the coal mines will go in and they'll take as much as they can out and sometimes they pull the columns down because it's kind of a whole thing so they'll they'll leave these giant columns of coal in the middle of these gigantic rooms to help hold the roof up i mean some of these places where they where they mine coal under in deep mines are just huge uh, some of them are small. That's what we all remember from history and, and anecdotes and, uh, you know, the poor woe, woe is me coal miners crawling on his knees with a pickaxe and a canary in his hat. But today's mines are a lot different. They'll go through and they'll have these continuous miners and these are the machines that just kind of churn the coal out of the seam and they'll leave these giant pillars so that the roof doesn't fall. And my my first father in law was a he he bolted roofs in the, in the coal mines and when he worked, um, he's been gone now many years. But he he would go ahead of everybody. They they and, and bolt the roof up uh, so that it wouldn't collapse on on the miners. But so there's always a little bit of coal left, and um, that will ignite for whatever reason, whether it's friction or or. Or something that uh, that stuff just sits there and smolders, and ever so often it will it'll flame up out of the ground. Depends on how close, obviously, to the surface it is, and then that will ignite uh, some of these um, some of these fires. Um, I was trying to think. I think there, <coughs> I think there's one 
not far, relatively not far from here, that's uh, continuously burning. And it's just the oddest thing that, that you see these little whiffs of smoke coming up out of the ground uh, because that stuff's burning under there. But yeah, two and a half weeks, two and a half weeks. <laughs> get your turkey, get ready to mark your calendar when to take that bird out of the freezer. But uh, so our, our tourism is going to be impacted for a little while um, around here because of these uh, outdoor activities anyway, are going to be curtailed a little bit because of these fires. But outdoor burning has been uh, restricted to uh, dark hours anyway for a long time. We have fire season. I mean, a lot of police, places do. Ours kicked in here a little while ago. AirBTC, I haven't heard anything new from uh, from them yet, but it's just been, you know, a couple of weeks since I heard from uh, from the man that they were, you know, still working on a new site. And hopefully that will kick off before too long. <clears throat> Miscellaneous, uh, I'm sure you can hear, especially those of you guys listening on the podcast, um, the strain and um, the clearing of the throat and stuff. Man, this is aggravating. I'm going to tell you, it's really aggravating. Um, part of this is from the inhaler. The inhaler is just playing havoc with my vocal cords. And um, I really, really noticed it uh, Sunday at church. Um, I've only been on the inhaler, what, a week now? I'm not even quite a week. And um, Thursday will be a week, I think. Yeah, Thursday will be a week. Um and I can feel it. I can feel the strain in my vocal cords. It's just, I, it's the only thing that has changed. It was before <laughs> these wildfires really got out there. Um, but I really did notice it, notice it Sunday at church, trying to sing uh, the hymns and stuff. It's just really how um, just tore up my vocal cords are. And um, I don't know if it's a, if, if it's something that's going to go away if it's something a different medication can fix, I don't see him and, uh, for a little while yet. I haven't even gotten my letter for my own MRI yet. It may be in today's mail. I kind of hope so. Because <laughs> um, I had told him a couple of dad's appointments that I couldn't, you know, reschedule for him that we had to avoid. And then I just told her, I said, just pick a day. And if I can't do it, I'll call you. So, um I need to get, you know, get that MRI on my, uh, on my lungs done, you know, whenever they get it. And then I'll follow up with the, uh, with the pulmonologist and see what he has to say. Hopefully it's not a whole lot of anything exciting. <laughs> Hopefully he says, well, you know what, there's absolutely nothing there and you don't need this inhaler unless you're having issues. And for that matter, you can use this other inhaler that may not be as difficult on your vocal cords as, um, as uh, this one is. Sorry, another little cough there. But um, so I'm, I've always had I've always had some lung sensitivity. And we talked the other day about uh, some of the trips to the hospital I had as a kid and the pneumonia and the alcohol baths and the ice baths and all this other stuff. But one thing that I've been railing about for several years now is this time. Well, it gets earlier every year, but this time of year when they start putting out those stupid cinnamon pine cones and cinnamon scented brooms and I, I can't. I can't handle these synthetic cin cinnamon uh, scented stuff. I can't. Air fresheners, any of that stuff. It, My lungs go into just spasms. And I'll get in. I went, it was in um, Hobby Lobby the other day, and I could just barely get a whiff of them. And I was trying to avoid them, but I couldn't see them because they were hidden behind stuff. And it was driving me crazy. And the drugstore had them back at the pharmacy desk. And I walked up there and I had my face covered up with my shirt. I'm like, I can't breathe from those things. Why would they put something like that out? I mean, I guess I could make a complaint to the manager, but all of these stores are putting them out. It's not like one letter to one manager is going to make a corporate change. You know, I can't be the only person out there who is overly sensitive to those cinnamon scented uh, uh, pine cones and holiday brooms and stuff that they just pile all over the place. 
I, I, I can't be. And I, I, I really wish that a group of us could get together and do the campaign and ask these places. If you're going to have those things, don't send them out, you know, like in, in the way where everybody can get to them. You know, have a sign that says cinnamon pine cones this way and have them back off somewhere because it's just miserable trying to walk through these stores and stuff and uh, tr breathing, breathing that stuff. It just drives me crazy. But uh, yeah, so the, the, some of the sensitivity to things like the smoke that's in the air now, the, um, um, the, the cinnamon stuff, some other, air, Mr. Holstein has a couple of air fresheners, one in his truck and one in his car that I don't know what the scent is, but they're those little, um, oh, um, what's the name of them? They're little, little tiny square ones with liquid air freshener in them. You plug, you stick them on the vents. Dang on, what's the name of them? Let's not renews it. Anyway, it chokes me to death. I can't stay. I, I pulled it because I've been driving his truck more because my truck's got to, I got to get a tire for my car. Um, and I have to, um, I have to pull that out of there. It kills me. It just kills me. So I don't have any new updates on that. Uh, and for those of you who, who aren't familiar, what I'm talking about is uh, my uh, pulmonologist is Think is trying to rule out um, a diagnosis of smoking related interstitial interstitial <laughs> smoking related interstitial fibrosis, which is a, uh, a lung disorder uh, caused by smoking. <laughs> Go figure, it says smoking related. So we're trying to rule that out. I kind of think maybe that's not what it is anyway, but I don't know what it is. It may be COPD, which is an umbrella term for emphysema and a couple other things, but <clears throat> we'll see. It won't be, a bit, I mean, it'll maybe a big deal, but it, I, we'll just deal with it. Whatever it is, we're going to have to deal with it because that's just how it is. So Monday, I picked up um, two pair of shoes based on a recommendation in one of the telegram groups uh, i picked up a pair of brooks and a pair of asics a-s-i-c-s and these are walking shoes they're not running shoes these are for walking um for walking for exercise if i need to be clear <laughs> uh that um i don't know what i'm going to carve out time to walk but I I need to get back on that regardless of what's going on with the lungs I need to get back to walking because um it's just better to have some exercise I also ordered this thing um I forget what the name of it is but it's a it's a device that you you set your regular riding bicycle on and, and you set it under the back wheels and um you, you use it this says like a trainer or something but you can tighten it up and and ride ride the bike pedal with some resistance and stuff and so you can get some exercise that way the plan is to make some room in the basement i don't know where <laughs> i don't know where i'm going to find this room in the basement but um I need to make some room in the basement so that I can do that, especially if it's raining or snowing outside when I can't walk. Because the days of being able to walk outside are going to quickly close in on me with rain and cold temperatures um, where it's just not good to be out in it. I really need to be walking the dogs. I used to do that regularly and I just kind of fell off that uh, partially because there are dogs here in the community that could get out of the yards and it caused an issue every time I tried to walk the dogs they were always trying to get at the, you know argue and fight each other but so it was a it was a struggle to just walk so uh, that kind of fell out of the way <clears throat> and uh, um, oh I can't see my rumble I don't know I guess that's right stream and rumble rumble I'm sorry but I have to have you open on a different machine and that machine does not have internet access right now I don't think it acts like it's still off. The TV upstairs did not come back on, so not that I can hear. So I think it's still off. Um, <clears throat> I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I totally, I totally blanked on what I was saying. Even with my notes, I looked at my notes. I'm like, that's not right. 
<laughs> but I, I do need to get back uh, get back on the exercise like we all do. Um, but I just, I, it's just more than time. I just have to do it. Nothing going on because of all these appointments that uh, I've got to, got to do um, with any of the, that's, that's my biggest thing. I just have my, my time is so packed up with stuff that I struggle to find time to do what needs to be done. I'm doing what has to be done, you know, like putting out, <laughs> putting out fires. Yeah. But I'm not getting, I'm not making any headway here recently. <clears throat> um, I'm not reading anything there for a little while. I was talking about things that I read. I'm not reading anything new other than the stuff for my coursework. Um, this one is the missional leader. And uh, <laughs> I actually got to speed read it today because I didn't get it done. And I got class tonight. And then this one I, I have read, uh, but oops, it's upside down. Uh, I have read, but I've got to go back over because I got to get my coursework done and submit it. I mean, I'm just going to be sitting right here for the next several hours. It's just going to be insane. <clears throat> so there's nothing new going on in the garden. I don't have any winter gardening inside like uh, sprouts or anything going on right now. I need to do that. <laughs> Again, here we go. Um, there's nothing exciting going on with the chickens and the ducks. Uh, we haven't had any more attempts of varmints that I know of trying to get in. Um, here about a week ago, we had a cat trying to get in, had everybody uh, upset in the coop. And um, I got the uh, hardware cloth uh, where the cat was trying to get in uh, uh, screwed down a little better. And uh, I haven't seen any more efforts. I haven't heard of a cat either. Um, trying to get in and Wayne had mentioned that it he thought maybe it was a raccoon I don't think it was because I, unless raccoons do they make cat noises because this sounded like a cat howling to try to get in after something um, maybe it was I don't know, I don't know anything about raccoons <clears throat> um, the ducks are still laying I had a couple of bad eggs but um, I think we're we're good now um, I do have um, a relative who or someone who's buying those uh, from me pretty well now so I'm not overwhelmed with them the church uh, the church is going fine we are still having our Bible study it's still back on track this week we do chapter 17 of Revelations no chapter 18 of Revelation uh, lunch and learn I'm just, I do want to show you this before I get too far uh, into the taxes that we're going to talk about here uh, in a few minutes. Uh, I am doing what's called a gift in a jar. Some of you ladies may be familiar with that. It's where you take uh, dehydrated uh, foods and dried foods and herbs and spices and stuff like that. And you put them together for a meal for someone and you, <clears throat> you present it as a gift. And this is one of three. I, I'm not doing all three of them tomorrow. This is just one of them. Um, this is a uh, cheesy egg breakfast uh, skillet, um, what, or bake, not skillet, it's a bake. So what you have in this jar are all shelf-stable things, that don't, things that don't need to be refrigerated. Uh, we've got some Parmesan cheese, we've got some um, imitation bacon bits. Now you could use bacon bits, but what you'd have to do is let the person you give this to add those. Um, Unless you get dehydrated ones, like from somewhere like uh, Thrive Life or something. Not dehydrated, freeze-dried, where it's shelf-stable. You could do that if you've got uh, freeze-dried bacon bits or even sausage, for that matter. As long as it's freeze-dried, it, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. Because you, you don't want the oils in whatever you're packing up to go rancid. And then we've got some cornflakes. We've got some Chex Mix, rice Chex Mix, and corn Chex Mix. And a few other little spices in here. And what you do with this, <clears throat> you put a little, I just put a ribbon on here for the decoration. You tie a little tag, gift tag, and the gift tag is going to have the instructions. And so this this one, the instructions would be to use this full jar, full, full quart jar of ingredients in a, <clears throat> a two quart uh, baking dish. Um, and then mix up four eggs. And a cup of milk and um, pour that over this mix let it set for about 10 minutes and then top that with some shredded cheese 
put it in a 350 oven for 45 to 55 minutes, keeping an eye on it because the eggs will burn if you're not careful. Uh, and you would give that with a, you would give this as the gift. And obviously they have to add their own ingredients, but it's just, it's just a little, it's a nice little thought, uh, something, it's a food, it's a shelf stable food for somebody and something a little different. We're doing uh, three different ones. We're doing this, we're doing a ham hock, um, stew which is really just kind of it's it's a twist on beans <laughs> it's a twist on dried beans and we're doing a turkey uh bow tie pasta skillet one and that one i put uh well we're not going to do all three of them we're just going to do one of them together and we'll give recipes for the other three um and the turkey and bow tie i made i did make all of them let's see if this will let me share the images <laughs> oh I don't think it's gonna let me do it hmm. it's not gonna let me do that one let me see if it'll let me do it this way all righty let me do this so what you have here well that's the um, that's the photo one that's not the right one well anyway what you're seeing here is um, is the uh, Darn it. I'm sorry guys, it's not I think it's because I'm on the um on the phone. It's giving me a few glitches. So what you see here, if you can see it, these are some pictures. Um this picture, let's see, is it gonna let me do that? Did it let you see that? It did let you see that. All right. Well, so this is the um Hem hocks do, and this is one of the, the ones that I'll be giving the uh, recipe for. And so, what you have in here are kidney beans, pinto beans, um, navy beans, and some uh, a, 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 like a a bay leaf, and then a little small Ziploc bag with spices in it. And you put this all together with up to four pounds of ham hocks, and you slow cook it forever and in a day and. And then you have this great, it's really good. I fixed all of these yesterday so that I could do the pictures. This one is the easy cheese bake that I just showed you. Um, easy e cheesy egg bake. I always trip over that. And this is what a piece of it looks like. Um, it's really good. You don't, but you have to be careful about your, um, your your baking dish because if it's too thin this will burn quickly if it's too thick it won't get done in the middle so you you really need a, nothing bigger than a two quart uh, jar or baking dish and this one should be yeah this is the turkey bow tie one oops this is really good it has a little bit of chili in it it has some um, <coughs> onions and um garlic and uh, what you see here is some stewed tomatoes and uh, turkey obviously and bow tie pasta it's really good i loved it and then so what you're doing is you're putting the jar together and you're giving the uh your friend or whomever you're giving it to um the um the jar with the pasta and the dry ingredients and then they're adding their own uh, uh turkey or chicken i mean you know it doesn't have to be turkey but or, or chicken and um and the uh, water and, and stuff for that to cook. But it's really, really good. I really, really enjoyed it. So that's not the uh, page I wanted to share anyway. Let me see if it will let me. Um, show you the one I wanted to show you. Hmm. Nope. It is not going to let me share. I'm going to try. It might let me show you this. 
this is the handout that I made for um, for tomorrow's course. Oh, come on. Don't do that. Um, and so we have a picture of uh, what you see here in the middle is a picture of all the ingredients staged up. And then in here in the middle of this picture is the jar itself. But the one I showed you just now, it didn't have that little green ribbon on it. And there's the cornflakes and, and all the stuff and the Chex Mix and all that stuff. Parmesan cheese and things that goes with it. And then I've just got the little introduction. It won't take us long. And then I've got the ingredients and stuff. The only other thing that I'll be doing is um, I'll be making the Hank, the tags, the, the tags that we're going to um, uh, share with everybody so that they can put on their so that they can put on their gifts. Hi Carla. You're just barely in time, sweetheart. <laughs> I've got 15 minutes and I'm running behind. <laughs> my internet went down and I'm trying to uh, run this off of my phone, so hopefully it's not glitching anywhere. But uh, so that's the lunch and learn for tomorrow, and hopefully we'll have a few people attend. I, I'm really not good at getting getting the word out on these on the ones that I do because I I don't have time to get it all together. I'm trying to. I'm trying to book people to do things. I'm trying to uh, to put things together. I'm trying to fill in the gaps. And, you know, I, it's just a nightmare for me. <laughs> but, it, you know, if God's telling me to do it, then I got to do it. And I think he is telling me to do that. So, um. <clears throat> all righty. So, uh, oh, I'm going to try a new, I, I don't know when I'm going to do it. There's a different streaming uh, program out there called Restream, and I'm going to try to use it because I believe you can see. Uh, and I was sharing this with um, with um, oh, um, geez, look at me forget Letty. Uh, the other day, she was she had commented she was looking for um some solutions to some issues that were coming up with um, the uh, self-reliance festival and some com complaints they'd been getting. And I was telling her, I said, I've see, I've looked at this a little bit. I haven't subscribed to it and set up an account. It's called restream and it looks like it may answer a lot of your problems. And then it also, sh it should show the way I understand it. It will show like uh, comments between like um, YouTube and uh, Facebook so that you can see each other in there instead of not knowing unless I use your name or something or both being on the same platform. So I may try that here coming up soon. Lunch and learn tomorrow is at noon at the Diamond Methodist Church. They're always on noon except except one uh, Thursday a month or one Wednesday a month, which in this case will be next Wednesday because of the holiday. It's from six to eight. And that's the one that West Virginia State University sponsors. And they're doing turkeys next week. And maybe, maybe if they can get their grant money uh, approved for it, we may be able to give a turkey, a frozen turkey to each participant. But I don't know that for sure yet. i got to reach out to John and find out if he got an answer. But hopefully we can do that. <clears throat> so um, tomorrow, tomorrow, our topic uh, that I just want to touch on a little bit more, a little more focused on as far as the B&B &B and taxes. Um, it's not an in-depth discussion of taxes unless you have some particular questions. I'm not a tax advisor. I'm just telling you from my own experience about taxes and your B&B, &B, especially if you are an Airbnb host or if you, like me, uh, do direct bookings from your home but you have a very small place you're not one of these eight or nine room uh grand victorian uh places that you know host people or some you know fancy historical building um you know that uh, lets rooms like a, and, and in a hotel manner or, or board, boarding house um and it's just really very simple stuff first you got to figure out you got to figure out are you required in most situations you're going to be required to at least have a business license of some sort and file um, 
sales and use taxes. That's what they are called here in, in West Virginia. And that's the business license tax. That's the sales tax that we, that we pay as business owners. And you're paying sales tax on the service of renting your room and you're paying taxes on um, anything you buy for that room. Um, so even if you just have one room or even if you're just renting a camper, even if you're just letting somebody have a tent <laughs> in your yard, whatever you're, you take in as your payment, as your rate, as your fee, you are required in many, many places to pay some form of taxes on it. Jurisdictions are different. Um, it, it can be different from state to state. It can be different from county to county. Where I am located, uh, I simply pay, because I just have the one room, I simply pay sales and use tax um, through through the state and through my state taxes. Sometimes, they, it, depending on the amount you pay, uh, you may have to pay in um, like quarterly payments. Uh, you may, you can, you can incorporate, you don't have to incorporate in many situations, but you can incorporate. And if you do, then you have your corporate registrations and all those things that go with that. Or uh, you can use your own personal uh, tax ID, your social security number uh, and file that, but you still have to pay it regardless. Uh, in most cases, if, uh, if you're, a, an Airbnb host. I can't speak to any of the other online travel agencies. Um, I don't work with any of the other online travel agencies, uh, such as VBRO or any of those. Uh, but I know for Airbnb, they pay the state taxes in many situations. Others, they don't. They take it out of the fees. They take. They collect it and they submit it to the state as a lump sum. Um, I still have to report my earnings and then I have to pay taxes on those earnings. So um, you need to check. It's very important. You need to check at your local, it could be your city, you could be an incorporated city, you check there, county or parish, state, and you're looking at occupancies. Uh, a lot of them are starting to um, call them short-term rentals and in West Virginia short-term rentals anything under 28 days. So um, you need to look into that. You need to make sure you're on the right side of that because you don't want to get hit with a big tax bill because you know may I, I get I get not wanting to be compliant with stuff but I'm gonna tell you if you get hit with a big tax bill you're gonna wish you were. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of taxes and I pay attention to how people vote on these things and I call them up on it and I get that goes down into another rabbit hole of, of voting and stuff. But um, right now I have taxes I have to pay. I'm not willing to lose everything I've built up over my lifetime to, because I didn't pay my taxes. So know what your tax requirements are. Check with your local, your county, your parish, and your state if you're in the United States. I can't speak outside of the United States. I don't even want to go there because those taxes are really different. Um, look up under different names like sales tax, occupancy tax, rental tax, hotel motel tax. Read through all that or get a good CPA. I mean, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, in West Virginia, there's a, a, a thing called a marketplace facilitator. Uh, the marketplace facilitator in West Virginia makes or facilitates the sales tax in West Virginia uh, on, on its own behalf or on behalf of uh, hotels or motels that, it, that exceed 100000 in gross revenue, which I, I don't have to worry about that. I don't know of any... Um, I mean, if you're making 100000 in gross revenue on uh, short-term rentals, you're not just a short-term rental. You're some kind of big mega corporation. Um, uh, so they, it's for hotel or, uh, operators uh, that, that will exceed $100,000 in gross revenue or immediately uh, the calendar year uh, immediately preceding. Um, 
marketplace facilitators makes or facilitates go figure uh, in West Virginia. West Virginia sales uh, on its own behalf and on behalf of one or more hotel hotel or motel operators in 200 or more separate transactions for an immediate for and immediately for this is so poorly worded it's a copy paste by the way from a government document <laughs> separate transactions for an immediately preceding calendar year or current calendar year the state tax department uh takes care of persons engaged in renting out rooms in hotel, motel, tourist homes, room, rooming houses, and other facilities, including personal residences. And you must collect tax, uh, collect state sales tax and municipal sales tax when applicable, municipal sales tax when applicable, but state sales tax in any case, based on the rental fee, the amount sub- subject to sales tax does not include local hotel or motel occupant occupancy taxes so that's a a a thick tongue way of saying that if you're a short-term rental if you're a boarding house uh if you uh if you're renting something out of your home you are obligated to pay state sales tax and maybe municipal municipality taxes you may not possibly may not be liable for motel hotel taxes. I do have some links uh, in the description below for more information. Uh, for And these are these focus on West Virginia, obviously, because I'm from West Virginia, but they may give you an idea of where to start and what to look at uh, when you are considering the taxes uh, due for your or and how to figure your taxes. If you're considering, uh, if you have been thinking about uh, hosting uh, whether you want to start with an Airbnb type setup or if you want to dr- straight up direct book, um, you've got to be kind of aware. The, the thing is, is I, I could maybe get away with it easier if I lived further away from neighbors. And I'm not dissing my neighbors. My neighbors are fine. I don't mean that. But if you live in an area where your neighbors are seeing people come and go, <laughs> they may think you're you're dealing drugs out of your place or they may think something's wrong. And then so they call the authorities and then this big thing gets rolling and you get uh, caught up and you find that uh, you um, you owe a bunch of taxes when you didn't think you were going to have to pay taxes on these things. Uh, Carla, the Lunch and Learn usually goes about an hour. Uh, it usually goes about an hour. So um, the uh, your, your tax obligations are there. Now, if I lived out, let's say I lived out, uh, Mr. Holstein has property in Lincoln County. Uh, it's way back off the road, quite a ways. You have to look for the uh, the little driveway to find it. Let's say that we had a, a nice place out there, and I was doing the same thing that I'm doing here: is renting a room or two out of out of the home. I might be able to get away with that because there are no neighbors. There are no neighbors. There's nobody to see you. And even if somebody saw people pulling off the road, they're not going to put two and two together. There's no there's no neighbors to be concerned. Uh, so it's far and away uh, from anybody. And I could probably get away with uh, not not collecting taxes and and stuff that way. But um, where I'm at now, it's in a uh, suburban area and um, it's it's a it's an old suburban area as in it used to be rural <laughs> until <laughs> <laughs> suburban sprawl happen um but you know my, i've got neighbors that are seeing people with out-of-state vehicles you know pull up here sometimes they'll park on the parking pad some of them park on the street you know they come in they're here for a night maybe two and then they leave and you know so they're seeing this traffic come and go and they might think well she's stealing drugs out of there or just maybe i make one of them mad and they say well, i'm just gonna report her and we all, all of us in the self-reliance world knows that if you get reported, it's going to be somebody who is close to you, somebody who knows you, somebody who gets angry about something you're doing. So um, you want to make sure you're on the up and up. Uh, I, I, I wanted to read a little more from some of these links, but the... Um, the internet is still down and there's just, it's not cooperating with me to uh, crack open the links. And um, it's just going to be a frustration for me <laughs> if I, uh, if I try to do that and it'll probably, it may knock us off I, because the, 
I have a limited, limited um, um, oh, hotspot uh, on my phone. So I don't, I don't want to overtax it with a lot and streaming this and uh, reading and all the back and forth that's going on with, uh, with uh, running a live stream like this is, will take its toll on the phone. So you can read more about it uh, in uh, using the links that will be in the there that are in the uh, in the um, description below. So I'm going to start winding it down now. I really appreciate you guys um, watching. I, I I appreciate you guys commenting and and talking. And I'm sorry, um, Hunter, if you were able to get back and, and listen at all, if, even if it's on the replay, honey, it wasn't your fault. Uh, the uh, in the internet took a took a took a dive. <laughs> It took me a few minutes to get things back up and going. But I appreciate you being here. And uh, I appreciate uh, all of the help and all of the encouragement and stuff that you guys give me all the time when you pop in and say hello. And Carla, if you do have time, you're more than welcome. You and the ladies are more than welcome to come. Please let me know, though, because, uh, Carla, because I need to have the jars ready. I need to have enough supplies ready. So I'll have to pick up last minute stuff uh, in the morning. If um, if you're going to be there, not just you, but if you're going to be bringing people, because I'll have enough for quite a few. But if you're going to be bringing folks with you, please let me know. And uh, I do appreciate you and I appreciate your time. And I, I know I've already said that. <laughs> I'm rambling. But I'm going to call it there. And I, I'll, I'll see you again on Friday uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, and uh, we'll... Uh, We'll get into some more information. Hopefully, we'll keep our internet stream going all the time. So we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Welcome, everyone. So there you have it. Post your comments. Do all that boosting, liking, sharing, thumbs up, and stuff that helps spread the word and poke the algorithms. Follow me on most of the big social media platforms and look for my name, Robin Holstein, or Holstein House. Till next time. Bye-bye.